turned an old country craft into an art form. The craft is basket making, but what they do to it is as intriguing as it is delightful, as I discovered at their home near Kendal. Nestling in the quiet village of Endmore, this cottage garden is like no other. In fact, you're prepared for the unusual as you encounter a sculptural menagerie, with little animals lining the paths, leaning against fences and perched on walls. They're all the work of Steve Fuller and his partner Simone Segan, who are earning an international reputation for willow weaving. It started for Steve 20 years ago, when an old farmer from Longtown taught him how to weave baskets. That led on to sculptures, which are now widely commissioned and have even appeared at the Chelsea Flower Show. But why willow? Well, I think it's because it's cheap to start doing for a start. You just need the material and a pair of secateurs and, and a knife. And you're away, really, and you just have to learn the skills. And because it's quite a quiet and relaxed craft as well, so unlike potting or anything that's more industrial, you've got a lot of noise, a lot of dirt, a lot of dust. So it just seemed a very rural thing. It all starts, of course, with the willow itself. And most people will imagine there's maybe one kind. There's not. There's, uh, no, you, no. You tell me there are dozens, No, there's about hundreds. 300 different varieties, as far as I know. And there's maybe about 10 varieties that we use in this country that are useful for planting and weaving. And they've got different leaf shapes, different catkins on them as well, and different bark colour different properties of growth, so some are very low growing and branchy, some are very tall and straight. So we choose the varieties that we need for the particular projects. Simone, who is originally from Ohio and the United States, made jewellery before she met Steve 10 years ago. Now she's hooked on weaving willow and loves doing animals. As we speak, she's working on a commission for a consignment of piglets. Yes, a little herd of pigs. So these piggies are going to go to the market. So we're going to be doing lots of shows over the summer. So we'll bring these to some of the shows as, a, as display pieces. And what kind of people buy these from you then? And what do they do with them? Well, lots of garden designers like them. And just people in general like to have them in their garden as just garden sculptures. So we do everything from making small scale projects with children, kind of sculpture projects and things like that to doing big willow arbours, domes, mazes, tunnels. These are created out of willow that's planted in the ground that will actually grow. It's just something you can be really creative with. Um, a lot of the designs I do, it's not anything that you can get from a, a, a reading a book. So you sit down and decide what you're going to make and it doesn't often turn out what you think it's going to be. So you can start doing, you know, a pig and it, you know, looks like a, a cat or something. So you, ne you never quite know what your willow sculpture is going to turn out to look like. How much is what you do motivated by trying to be environmentally good? I mean, it, 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 does the environmental thing really play a big part for you? Um, I think it does, but we probably don't think about it very much these days, but if you're thinking about like carbon footprints and things like that, probably the amount of trees that we plant as willow sticks probably compensates for the fuel that we use for travelling around the country, but we, it's important for us to have a renewable resource of material to work with, so it's environmentally friendly from that point of view and kind of spreading the word of, in, about environmental education, encouraging people to grow more willow in their gardens and you know, on their land, because it makes fantastic habitat. How do people react to, to the kind of things you do with the willow? I, I, I imagine children would be the most fascinated. They, they just love it. I mean, they, it's something they really enjoy. They get a lot of satisfaction out of it because we can make very simple uh, structures with children and they can see the results really quickly. Because as you know, children are very impatient. So it, it really focuses their, focuses their attention. So we pull that in, weave that back in there. It's grown quite well. It's nice and strong, isn't it? It is nice and strong, isn't it, eh? I don't see any failures in here. The, the nicest thing is working in schools alongside children 
but not having to have all of the hard work that teachers have with, with the children. So we do a, have a fun day with children, which they probably remember for the rest of their lives. And hopefully we kind of lead them along the path to working with environmental projects. Okay, I'll give you a little lesson again, okay? Just to refresh your memories. So do you remember, it was a figure of eight weave, wasn't it? So we go in and out. And it's a lovely craft for a couple too, isn't it? Because it means you can work together. You can work together and produce things together. Well, it's, I think if you were doing it on your own, it's a very lonely occupation. Because you just, you, you know, when you're making a willow sculpture, you're, you could be sat in a shed or in your studio for hours. And also because with our work, there's a lot of traveling. You'd never see your partner if, if it was something that you did on your own. So I really enjoy that. The wonders of Willow in Cumbria. And now, as promised, a reminder of our Dale's Diary competition. We're giving